Hello everyone and welcome to Azam Shah Weekly. In this small video, I'm going to show you some of the changes that actually happened from Xcode 11 beta 3 to beta 4. So you can see over here that I'm running the 4 beta 4 version or version 11. Now one of the things that you should realize is that if you want the Xcode live previews to work, you also have to get the latest on your Mac OS. So download the latest beta version for Mac OS Catalina and then download and install the latest version of the Xcode, which is Xcode 11 beta 4. Now there are some changes that actually happen. I found a couple of them at least, um, and some of them are actually breaking changes. So if I try to build the application right now, it's not gonna build because there are some problems. Now one of the breaking changes, it happens right over here in your view model, the post view model, and in the bindable object. So basically we were always using the did change. Now this has been changed and this is now called a will change, which to be really honest, I don't really like the name will change. I think did change was much nicer and will change is kind of giving you a different sense. Now if I go ahead and build this, that's the only breaking change that I was, I could, was able to find. And now if you see that it builds successfully, that's great. But now if you go ahead and jump into uh, content view, there are some uh, deprecation warnings. Let's start with the easy one. Color has been deprecated and now it has been replaced by foreground color. So we should be able to fix it simply by clicking on the warning and saying fixed. And you can see now it's replaced with foreground color. Now this one, which happens on the for each loop. So basically this is saying, if I click over here, is the identified by is deprecated using or for use for each or list and then you have to pass in the ID. So you don't really have to pass in the identified by. So if I have to write this same thing again, I will do something like this for each. And you'll see now it has different uh, arguments. So for data, I already have the data which is coming from names. And for the content, which is the second parameter, I can actually pass in the particular ID. So it should be ID parameter, which should be self in this case. And the remaining part remains the same, which is name in, and then we can use the text over here and we can simply put it right here. And I can most probably comment this section out because this is now deprecated. Let's go ahead and build that. It's gonna produce the same exact result and this time we don't really get any issues, no warnings, no nothing. So let's go ahead and check out the canvas. One of the problems I also found is sometimes you are not able to resize a canvas, but right now it looks like it's working fine. And the result is what you will expect. So these are the three changes. The for each, if you're using, use self or use ID in other words. Color is no more replaced by foreground color. And finally, in the preview uh, or in the bindable object, it's changed to will change instead of did change. So one of the corrections um, over here in the will change is that if you go ahead and check out the documentation for bindable object and specifically the will change event, you're gonna see that instance that publishes an event immediately before the object changes, before the object changes. But over here, what we are doing is, well, after the object has changed. So this might be the wrong implementation. I don't really know what they actually mean by that, but before the object, which basically, in other words, at least for me, it means that before this object has changed, before the property has been mutated, you have to fire this. All right, so instead of using all of that, we can actually create our new property. So var is published, which will be a Boolean, and it will have a getter and setter. So a setter will set something. So let's say self dot, or we can simply say underscore is published, kind of like a private property, equals to whatever, true or new value basically. All right, now we don't really have anything called underscore published, so I'm just gonna create a private property, or a, it can only be set privately. And then it will be is published, which will be a Boolean property initialized to false. Now I also need a getter, so getter will be really simple. 
because the getter is simply going to return the if publish property itself. I'm going to remove all of this stuff. All right. Now let's go ahead and build that. So one of the things that we need to do is this is where we are mutating the property with a new one. We can actually go ahead and fire our will change right over here by saying self dot will change dot send. And there we go. So this will be hopefully before obviously the property changes. And we can actually go ahead and wrap them in the main queue, main dot async. If I can spell it right. And we can wrap this around with both of these things. So there we go. All right. So in this where it's in this way we are actually calling will change first of all inside the main queue, but also bef after uh, before the property is actually changed. And we can actually go ahead and say self dot is published over here. So now if we go over here into the bindable object definition we can now see that we kind of agree with that. An instance that publishes an event immediately before the object changes. So now this object is being changed when we assign the is published uh, property and we are sending this event which is before the object has actually changed or mutated the value. So there you, hope. There you go. This is the will change event in the bindable object in Xcode 11 beta 4. If you like this video and want to learn more about Swift UI framework, then check out my Udemy course, Swift UI Declarative Interfaces for any Apple device. Now this is a six hour on demand video and it covers a lot of different things as you can see about Swift UI. Not only about Swift UI, but also about how you can use MVVM design pattern to create your next Swift UI applications. It goes into more details also about forms and property wrappers and gestures and custom views integrating with the UI kit apps and Xcode previews and much, much, much more. I'm still working on some new sections about models and how the models can communicate with the parent and they will be available very, very shortly. Now, the real price of this course is much higher, but you can get it for a very good discount if you just click on the link in the description. Now the link is already there in the YouTube video description along with some other courses if you're interested. So simply click on that link which will take you to the Swift UI and you will get this course for just $9.99, $9.99. That's the best deal. I really request you to use the coupon, the links that I have provided you in the description because if you use those coupons, to be really honest with you, I get to keep more higher revenue, which is 90%, so 90% of $9. Or if you don't use those coupon, then I only get 10% of $9.99. So thank you so much for supporting me. And if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to ask me. And thank you so much.